Hello and welcome to the Anglican Parish of Gisborne. As we once again lead you in worship on this, this last Sunday of the Church's year, the, known as the Reign of Christ or Christ the King. The service basically follows the same form as we do most weeks, with a couple of little variations for the last Sunday of the Church's year. My name is Dennis, I'm the parish priest, and it's my pleasure to lead this time of worship today. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We gather together virtually in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may give ourselves to the service of God. Jesus says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our heart stand for joy, and in our song we will praise God. Let us pray. Stir up, we beseech thee, O Lord, the wills of thy faithful people, that they, plenteously bringing forth the fruit of good works, may of thee be plenteously rewarded, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As we prepare to hear God's holy word through the scriptures, open our hearts and minds, Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Daniel. As the visions during the night continued, I saw one like a son of man coming on the clouds of heaven. When he reached the Ancient One and was presented before him, the One, like a Son of Man, received dominion, glory, and kingship. All peoples, nations, and languages serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not be taken away. His kingship shall not be destroyed. The Lord is King. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is King, in splendor robed. Robed is the Lord and girt about with strength. The Lord is King, he is robed in majesty. And he has made the world firm, not to be moved. Your throne stands firm from of old. From everlasting you are, O Lord. The Lord is King, he is robed in majesty. Your decrees are worthy of trust indeed. Holiness befits your house, O Lord, for length of days. The Lord is King. He is robed in majesty. A reading from the book of Revelation. Jesus Christ is the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, who has made us into a kingdom, priests for his God and Father. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming amid the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. All the peoples of the earth will lament him. Yes. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, the one who is, and who was, and who is to come the Almighty. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. 
Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is to come. Alleluia, alleluia. A reading from the Gospel of John. Pilate said to Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this on your own, or have others told you about me? Pilate answered, I'm not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not here. So Pilate said to him, Then you are a king? Jesus answered, You say I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. This Sunday is the Solemnity of Christ, King of the Universe. It's a very special day, the start of the last week in the Church's calendar. What does it mean to say that Jesus is a King? It means that Jesus has to be in charge of our lives. We have to listen to Him and serve Him always. He tells us to love God and each other. Jesus is a really good King. He isn't like human kings who are sometimes bad people who use their power selfishly. We understand this from our Gospel reading. Pontius Pilate asks Jesus, Are you the King of the Jews? And Jesus answers that his kingdom does not belong to this world. His kingdom isn't a place for people who only want worldly power. His kingdom isn't ruled by people like Pontius Pilate, who use their power to stay in charge and control others. Another thing about bad kingdoms is that everyone starts saying that they know the truth. Many people say that there are lots of truths other than God's truth. Sometimes we use these fake truths as reasons for doing whatever we want and whatever is easiest. Pilate chooses to do what is easy when he sends Jesus, an innocent person, to die. But when Jesus is in charge, we listen to God's truth, the only truth, the truth of love. In Daniel, we hear again about the Son of Man, who comes to heaven on the clouds. The Ancient One, God, makes him king. Daniel's prophecy about this rightful king came true in Jesus, the one who rules with truth and is willing to die for us. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You can also support Catholic Kids Media on Venmo or Patreon using the links in the description. Thanks for watching. Hello. Well, there's a significant debate happening in Victoria at the moment about the nature of the laws that will replace the current enforceable uh, health authority powers in the event of uh, further uh, pandemic situations. The idea is broadly to replace the authority for the uh, chief health officer to be able to issue directives for this to be transferred into the political sphere for the Premier and the Health Minister, broadly speaking. And of course there's some attraction to that because uh, they're people who are publicly accountable in a far more direct way than an official. And I think that is not to be critical of those who are officials in the government bureaucracy, who seem to me to be quite able to interpret all sorts of independent advice and act fairly and impartially for the good of the community. It seems that the discussion will come down to uh, uh, persuading, it seems, three people in the Legislative Council, the Upper House of the Victorian Parliament, as to the merits or not of uh, the government's proposed legislation. It's a good thing we can have a debate about these kinds of issues. It is always possible that someone in the future could use laws like this in a cynical way. Uh, that would be reprehensible, and we need to ensure that 
that opportunity is not there. I don't think that any of our current political actors are at all interested in being cynical about the use of these forces. But it is imaginable that situations could arise where someone who wanted to be a, a cynical leader could make a, a directive of the kind that's being proposed. Uh, that directive could um, impair the opportunity of Parliament even to meet. It would reduce the opportunity of their decision being properly scrutinised and accountable. And you can imagine how that scenario could run in um, an imagined situation. And that's always difficult, isn't it? Because we have a wonderful capacity of doubt and imagination. We've got great abilities to track into the future and see where something might go disastrously wrong. When in fact, these laws are about matters which are wrong in our community now. They're about a health directive, they're about a situation of a pandemic that we know quite well, whatever is our view of how they've been handled at the different state levels or at the national level, uh, the fact is this is uh, a well-known disease that is uh, capable of causing vast harm and vast death, as we've seen in some other countries. Uh, so it's likely that the uh, actions that we might need in the future have to be as uh, strong as the ones that have stood us well to this point. I think the missing part is the kind of public debate this was something I've spoken of a few uh, weeks ago, the, the need for these regulations to, um, uh, or the acts to be brought into the parliament because of the legislation that we currently have, its enforceability expiring in December. But I think there needs to be an engaged public debate, which is something that in our broad polity, we don't tend to be as good at doing as I think we may have once been able to do. Hearing what citizens would like, not just the, the noisiest activists on different sides of an argument, but really engaging with citizenry. And that's why I always say that if you have the opportunity of engaging with your local elected members of parliament, in this case in the state parliament at the Legislative Assembly or the Legislative Council, it's very important that you make your views known to them because uh, they will carry those views, if they're doing their job, into the consideration of these matters at the parliamentary and political level. And it's important that views of people yeah, who are ordinary people, who have ordinary wisdom, perhaps even uncommon wisdom about these matters and how they might be best balanced, the balance between the authority to uh, uh, repress the spread of an infection and the protection of uh, all of the rights and liberties that we want to see in a society like ours enhanced. So uh, do some research on this. There's uh, a few things that are being um, reported in the press. I don't know if we're getting the full picture um, from the internal discussions, but uh, I think your local members of parliament, they should be able to tell you what they know. And if they don't know too much about it, I think it's a good chance for you to raise the expectation on their active engagement in these decisions. May the Lord Jesus bless you and keep you, watch over you and protect you this day and forevermore. Amen. If you'd like to follow up Archbishop Phillips' suggestion of contacting your local member, her name is Mary Ann Thomas and they, she is located at Shop 14 at the Nexus Centre in Gisborne. Um, email address is also on the screen and the two phone numbers, her local office and ministerial office. I wish you well with that. Rejoice, the Lord is King, your Lord and King adore. Mortals give thanks and sing and triumph evermore. Lift up your heart, lift up your voice, rejoice again, I say. The Savior reigns, the God of truth and love. When He had purged us.
The response to Christ who reigns from the cross is, hear our prayer. Christ who reigns from the cross, hear our prayer. Let us pray to the Lord for pardon and peace in the church and throughout the world. Keep the church strong under Christ her head, faithful to the inheritance of his sacrificial love. Make your priests and ministers good shepherds of the flock, entrusted to their care. Christ who reigns from the cross, hear our prayer. We pray for those who do evil things from ignorance of the truth. Where nations and races are divided, may they be reconciled through the love of Christ. Christ who reigns from the cross, hear our prayer. Grant us loving wisdom towards all those who need our care. Bless our children and the children of our friends and neighbours. Support with grace all who are doing caring work in our community. Christ who reigns from the cross, hear our prayer. Have mercy on all who are derided for their beliefs or their way of life. Save and relieve all who suffer under power that is abused in the name of the law. Christ who reigns from the cross, hear our prayer. Give to those who are sick or in distress your gift of wholeness, healing, comfort and strength. We name in our hearts those for whom our intercession is especially asked. Grant to all who call upon you that which is expedient in your sight. Christ who reigns from the cross, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have repented and turned to Christ at the hour of death. Receive them in your love and be with him in his kingdom forever. Christ, who reigns from the cross, hear our prayer. We offer our prayers in the name of Christ, our King, as we pray together. Confirm, O God, the work you have done in us and preserve in the hearts of your people the gifts of the Holy Spirit, that they may not be ashamed to acknowledge Christ crucified, but may carry out his commandments with unfailing love. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As Jesus has taught us, so 
confidently, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Paperwork from last week's annual meeting is available on the website at anglicanparishgisborne.org.au. Please keep the bookings going, even though we're almost back to normal. Service times uh, for uh, next week is just one service at 10am, and that will be to celebrate the first Eucharist of Reverend Deborah Safri, Safri Collins, who will be ordained priest on right, Saturday. Please keep Deborah in your prayers. Also, um, we are still required to prove our vaccination status in the churches and in our op shops. Please look after our staff and you know, bear in mind that this is not their decision or a decision of the parish. Again, I remind you of the Archbishop's uh, interesting call to us to be in touch with our local members and uh, I do strongly commend you to do so. Blessed are you, Lord our God, how sweet are your words to the taste, sweeter than honey to the mouth, how precious are your commands for our life, more than the finest gold in our hands. How marvellous is your will for the world, unending is your love for the nations. Our voices shall sing of your praises and our lips declare your praise for ever and ever. Amen. In the prayer for Deborah. Great Shepherd of your people, bless Deborah, call to the priesthood in your church. Fire her heart with passion for your word and a care for your people, that she may joyfully proclaim your gospel and faithfully minister your sacraments. Guide her in her prayer and study, that she may be dis a discerning and loving pastor, enabling all to minister to the glory of your name and the benefit of all your world. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Christ, our exalted King, make you faithful and strong to do his will, that you may reign with him in glory. In the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.